This is Stu Ellis with your Illinois Corn Connection, brought to you by Illinois Corn. Excessive heat certainly has challenged the growth of corn. And we get an update on the corn growth stages right now from Dr. Connor Sibyl, University of Illinois physiologist. Sue, so that's something a lot of a lot of people are seeing. They drive down the road and they see that corn rolling. Um, and what we're seeing in our research trials is there are a lot of variables at play as to how much is it rolling, how much that crop is being affected by that heat. Some of the things we see is our earlier planted crops, some of our fields that went in before May 15th, right? They're bigger plants. Bigger plants have a bigger water demand. They're bigger for uh, heat interception, sunlight interception. So they're maybe taking a little harder. So some of those earlier uh, planted fields I'm seeing roll a lot earlier in the day. Some of that later planted stuff that went in maybe after May 15th, smaller plants, not using as much water. They're doing a little better in handling the heat. and Maybe they're not rolling until the late afternoon. Um, and so a lot of variability in terms of when we planted and what stage that crop's at as to how much that heat is going to have an effect. Okay. When you say stage, are, are we... It, are we getting to the uh, that six or eight leaf stage? Can you really tell a, a, a variation to cut off at that point? Starting to, yes. So when I was walking some fields yesterday, my corn that was V4 to V6, it looked pretty good until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, wasn't rolling yet. My V10 corn was definitely rolled by about 10 in the, uh, 10 in the morning. So the, about V8, V9, then and onward, that's when that crop's really going to start to feel that heat stress a lot earlier in the day. What can we do about this? That's a great question. So um, first thing we have, uh, look at genetics. Some hybrids naturally tolerate and regulate their water use uh, better. We've got a hybrid study. You could see it. Different hybrids were definitely rolling at different times of the day. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the, sometimes we don't pick our hybrid based on heat tolerance, so sometimes that might be the luck of the draw. Um, there are some products out there that are proposed to mitigate and help the water regulate or help the plant water its reg regulate its water use. Things like some of these biostimulants, sugars, amino acid products. Um, the challenge there is you need to put that product out before the heat comes. So uh, it's kind of like a, a preventative, and, and maybe we can put the Band-Aid on, but some of the bleeding's already occurred. Um, so think about when we're going to do these management practices. Think a lot of times they need to be a little proactive rather than reactive from the biostimulant perspective. So at this point when we've had a week behind us of heat, a week ahead of us of heat, probably not much we could do right now. Probably not. We are fortunate enough, Central Illinois, this next Saturday, Sunday, um, we're down to a little cooler temperatures, uh, got a little bit of a break. That crop is maybe going to get a chance to recover a little bit. And maybe if we're doing some post-emergent herbicide timings, we can put in something like a sugar or amino acid and get it kind of ready for the next heat wave. Um, certainly a possibility, but some of that stuff that we're done spraying, uh, we probably miss that window for this season. That was your Illinois Corn Connection. I'm Stu Ellis. To learn more about how Illinois Corn is working for you, visit www.illcorn.org.